Um, hi guys, um, Eddie, start with you if, you if you don't mind. What was it like in um, welcoming Chelsea to your new home here in Atlanta? <laughs> yeah. um, nah, it's uh, just seen Maurizio on the way out there, so really looking forward to the game. Um, it's a great game for us. Uh, they're training on the pitch now, so I don't know how they managed to get one up on us there, but um, <laughs> fair play to them. How are they? Um, we watched a bit of the training session earlier. How are the players dealing with the, the, the heat? Because it, I mean, it certainly feels a lot hotter here than it was in Philadelphia. Just a bit. Yeah. Um, trips will give you a better answer yeah. probably than me, but yeah, it was a hot one today. That's the hottest it's been by a long way. And of course, the, the, we trained a little bit later today, so the temperatures were, I'd say, even a little bit uncomfortable for me. Yeah. Um, and I wasn't running around, so. Um, <laughs> but it was a, I thought it was a, a good session today. Lads enjoyed. Their work and yeah, hopefully we give a good performance tomorrow. And, and Harvey up to full speed by the looks of things. I think you even gave him some extra running after the the session. Um, what where is he in terms of his preparation for the season? Is he alongside the rest of the lads? Um, I'd say he's, he's probably slightly behind uh, where our lads at the moment, only because he's um, there was a, a probably a period of five six days where he was training on his own, and that's you can do the fitness work, but you just lose a little bit of sharpness with the ball. So. I think uh, two, three, four days, I think, he'd be in a really good place with us if he joins in with the group sessions. And, of course, now we have a period of two games in quick succession, so we hope that will certainly help get him ready. Are you in a position at all to give us an update on Alan St Maximin and, and his potential departure? No, I've, I've, I don't really know what's happening there, but, of course, if nothing officially has come out, then um, the deal's not completed. Kieran, can I ask you a couple? Um, how much are you looking forward to playing here tomorrow in Atlanta? I believe it's a, a sellout, and you've had a chance to meet some of the, the Newcastle fans based here th this morning. Gives you an idea of just what the support is, is like here. How much is how much are you looking forward to that? No, really looking forward to it. I think for the fans to come and watch us train, to watch how we work, um, and to connect together was important. And I feel like the game tomorrow, really looking forward to it. Really nice stadium against the top opposition. Um, yeah, it's just excitement, you know, great experience for the lads uh, to play at the stadium and against a tough team, so really looking forward to it. And what kind of role do you play individually as part of the leadership group? You've obviously, you're a captain when you when you started um, last season. I saw the video of, of you talking to Sandro when he arrived and saying, look, if there's anything you need help with on or off the pitch, let me know. Harvey's obviously in there now as well. Can you just give us a little bit of a flavour, an example of the kind of things you do to, to help these guys settle? Yeah, I think it's always important because when players come from a different country, it's, I know how hard it is. When I went to Spain, when I experienced it, it's difficult. So it's always important when a new player comes to the team, uh, not just myself, we've got plenty of experienced players in the dressing room. Um, leadership comes from different different type of ways on and off the pitch. I think we've got that real, real togetherness in the team from the leadership group. So every player that comes in, they feel valued, they feel welcome straight away and I hope that the players feel that way. Is that something you maybe didn't appreciate so much before you went to, to Madrid? Um, you know, obviously at Madrid it was it was tough, but again, I had good players there who played in the Premier League, who spoke English, who helped me, uh, made me uh, settle quickly, and my family, which were the most important thing. So, and like like you said on the video, it's it's important that Sandro's family are settled, because ultimately that'll make him feel settled and make him you know, perform at the highest level as long as he's happy that him knowing that his family's settled. Thanks. Greg at the front. Hi, Eddie. Uh, Mauricio Pochettino just sat there and spoke about wanting more players, as he's all seemed to do at this time of year. Where are you on with that? You know, we saw that today you've got Amanda Murda, Dan Ashworth, Andy Howe, everyone's there. So are you working behind the scenes with regards to, to the next one? Yeah, I don't think that work ever stops. I think we are aware that we, we want to uh, improve the, the depth in our squad. We're currently working towards that, but no updates on any targets getting closer. It's um, still in the phase where we're, we're trying our best. But yeah, we have a full team with us uh, trying to help us get those deals done. And there's a few reports today of different players going out on loan. Can you update us on Jamal Lewis, Grant Cole, and I think Harris Nashby has been linked with a loan move as well. Is there anything you can say on, on those three? Um, Jamal Lewis is probably the nearest to um, securing a loan move to Watford. That one is in the, in the pipeline. looks like that will get done in probably the next 24 hours. The other two, Ashby and Cole? The other two, no. no, no nothing 
uh, close, I don't think. And Carl Darlow going to Leeds? Yeah, again, Carl, that, that's a possible one that might happen um, within the next few days. Carl would certainly go with our best wishes. He's been an incredible servant to the football club. We value him very highly, but uh, we can't carry a team of five um, goalkeepers. Thank you. Question there. Eddie, a follow-up to Keith's last question about uh, Sandro Tonali. Just from your perspective, uh, how would you view how he's acclimating to life in England and becoming a part of the Newcastle family? Yeah, very good. I think I've been very, very impressed from day one with Sandro. I think very difficult, as Kieran alluded to, to, to settle in a, a new country, a new style of football, a new team, new teammates. But from day one with him, he was very calm, composed, and... Um, yeah, it looks like he's got a great mentality for new challenges. I think this trip will really help him settle in with the group. So you, you just get to spend all your free time with your teammates and there's no better way of getting to know them and to feel acclimatised into the team than actually spending time with people. And also on the pitch, so when you play a game, suddenly the, the dynamic of you and your teammates changes. So those games we have coming up, again, are an important part of his process of learning how to play for Newcastle. Oscar. Kieran, a, a similar question really on, on Sandra. How, how is he getting on behind the scenes? He, he seems like a, a quiet guy. Have, have you seen a different side to him yet? Not yet. It's only early days, but um, no, Sandro is, as a player, I think he speaks for himself. I've played against him a few times now when I was in Atletico and, and for England. So, you know, we brought uh, a top quality player who can, who can help us move forward. Um, but yeah, behind, behind the scenes, you know, he, he interacts, you know, he's... He's, he's not been here long, but his English is getting better. But, you know, that'll take a bit of time. But the most important thing is we've got a great squad here. We've got a great togetherness in the squad who will make everybody feel feel welcome. Um, but, yeah, you know, on the pitch, the football does the talking. So he'll settle in very quickly, that's for sure. Simon and then George. Yeah. Kieran, can I ask you, it's a very important time to bond the, the squad. Can I ask you what you've been doing off the pitch? I think we've seen a few pictures of you playing baseball. Were you any good at it? Was anyone any good at it? And... Any home runs, that kind of thing? There was a lot, um, a lot of home runs. Um, but obviously, when you come on pre-season, it's always, it's always important to, to do activities because it brings the squad together. I think we've shown that last season, how, how strong we was mentally um, together as a team. It's so powerful. So I think this season, with new signings coming in and team events, you know, having a walk around the, the city or, like you say, baseball or whatever it may be, it's always important to bring everyone together. Um, and it's like I said, last season, it, it done us wonders uh, how together it was and hopefully that can move forward this season. Can you give us a name for the, the home run scorer and the, and the chief pitcher if you're, if you're putting his team I together? I think, uh, I think yeah, yeah. Darlow, Darlow and Murph. Was he? Yeah, a lot of home runs, I was surprised. Right. Sven. Jamal looked strong. I was a bit, who's that? Jamal uh, Lasalle looked quite strong. Maybe. Good technique? No, I was a bit, well, I thought, um, I was expecting a bit better from some some players, but um, a few people surprised me as well. But no, it was, it was a good laugh, and uh, as we said before about the togetherness, it's, it's important. Are you being allowed a few beers out here, Kieran? No, no chance. <laughs> Pre-season, you know, you've had your time to, you know, you've had a couple of weeks off. Now it's about working hard, and I was about getting ready for a, a tough, demanding season, and made no mistake, we will be ready. George. Hi, Eddie. My question's about Sandro as well, but sort of thinking about it, you're sitting next to your first signing, huge statement, La Liga winner, England international, but joining a team that was in the relegation battle and there was a sort of leap of faith there from, from him. Sandro joins a team with a similar sort of skill set, but that's in the Champions League. Is that a sort of different statement by the club and what does it represent, do you think? Yeah, well, I always think with new signings, I think that the word statements used a lot. Oh, it's a statement signing. It's, it, there's, for me as a manager, there's no type of statement trying to be made. We just want to bring really good players to the football club who we feel can take the club onto another level, the team onto another level. I think going back to Kieran's situation, his was a, a massive leap of faith, a leap of faith in in us, in me. We, you know, we had a, a relationship from a previous club. But I thought it also spoke volumes for his character that he was prepared to take on a challenge like that with the team in the relegation zone with no way out of the football club. If the club had gone into the championship, Kieran would have would have stayed and tried to fight and get Newcastle out of the, the championship. So it was a, 
an amazing thing. And I'm so pleased for Kieran that he's had now the benefits of that trust. You know, the fact the club's done well and he's done unbelievably well in the team. But Sandro is just, just, just a, another very good player that we feel can elevate the team um, without wanting to put too much pressure on him. We think he is a, you know, a top player and uh, we certainly look forward to seeing him uh, in the Premier League. I think he'll um, be a big success. Lee at the front. Eddie would be amiss not to talk about Almiron coming back here tomorrow night. I mean, he can light up that stage. Yeah, well, I just walked around the stadium there. I mean, I, yeah, what, what a stadium. Um, I, I didn't expect it, to be honest. I, I hadn't really seen any pictures of the stadium before. and um, Very unique arena. Um, so certainly looking at Miggy's history, he'd be delighted to come back and show everybody how he's developed as a player and how well he's done in his career since leaving. Um, I know he speaks really fondly of his time here. He loves his experiences and the people that he met. Um, and I'm sure everyone will greet him really well and I think it'll be a, a really touching moment actually. He's actually the captain of Paraguay. Does his leadership skills not get a decent mention um, in Newcastle? I think Miggy's a type of player that leads by example really rather than words. Um, <laughs> he's just an infectious character. He, he makes, he's making me laugh here just thinking about him on a daily basis because he, he just gives 100% in every training session. Very professional guy. He's probably along with Kieran, he's one of the first in after a game the next day to recover, to look after his body. Um, really deserves all the success he gets because of how he conducts himself in his personal life and how professional he is. And delighted he had the season he had last year. And now we hope that he can push on and do even better next year. Just one on transfers. I mean, have you got a number in your head of how many players might come through? <laughs> one, two, three, yeah. Anything you can throw at us? I think uh, a number is difficult, Lee, because as soon as I say that, then we immediately put ourselves under pressure. I hope we can do more business. Um, I think we need to. But it won't be huge numbers. You know, It won't be um, uh, loads of players coming through the door because we don't have the, the ability financially to do that with financial fair play. So hopefully it'll be quality over quantity. Yes, Ben, second row. Eddie, since just before the World Cup break, you've managed against Chelsea with Graham Potter in the dugout, with Frank Lampard.